Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. Something I believe I've mentioned probably more than once on my podcasts is about the whole filming process and how sometimes I may repeat myself. Actually, I think sometimes I repeat myself just because I'm getting older. I hear this a lot from my kids, like, Dad, you've told us this story already. So I'll blame some of the repeating myself on age and some of it on just the way that I film these podcasts. And the way that I film these podcasts is basically the night before I have a very hard time sleeping because my mind is just racing on what am I going to talk about? How can I possibly fill up 17 to 22 minutes of podcast? And invariably what happens is I wind up with about an hour of footage that then I trim down to 17 to 22 minutes. Now, this doesn't mean that it's an hour of quality material. There's a lot of stuff that gets cut out just because either I fumble over my words or something I say doesn't come out exactly right or there's something wrong with the focus and I just I feel like that whole segment is screwed up. There's other times where I feel like I didn't convey the message that I wanted to convey, that maybe I came off wrong, um, like I'm complaining or something like that. And I'll get rid of chunks of video that fall into that category. And then, you know, usually I get myself down into that 17 to 22 minute section. But this also means that I don't always remember if something I talked about actually wound up in the podcast. And there's one topic that I've actually done four times now and deleted it each time just because, uh, again, I kind of came off both a little bit as a, a complainer, but also I think I gave too much potential fodder to trolls, you know, to, to really kind of tell them how to push my buttons. And I decided probably better just to keep that to myself, not let you know what sort of comments irritate me because then, you know, if you're a troll, you're going to do that. Hopefully though, when I cover a topic multiple times on podcasts, I'll be doing it from a maybe a slightly different angle, or maybe you're a new viewer and you didn't see that older podcast, so it seems brand new to you. We'll see. But just in advance, I'm sort of, I guess, apologizing or explaining why it might happen. So with that out of the way, let's hop into April 24 and 21. So again, for those of you who may be new to the channel, new to the podcast, the notion behind 24 and 21 is in each of the 12 months of 21, that's the 21 part, in each of the 12 months, we will pick two things, or at least I will, and whoever wants to participate can do it as well. One positive habit that you would like to start. It can be small as you want. In fact, I encourage it to be small, something that's easy to make into a daily habit that cumulatively will be impactful in your life. And then also pick one negative or non-value added thing, something that is a drag on your life, something that slows you down, makes you less productive, makes you less happy, or makes you not as much the person you wanna be. And take that little thing and get rid of it. And the intent is, for the most part, that these aren't simply a one month and then done, but rather after doing it for a month, you've instilled it as a habit. So some of the things that I've done, for example, one of the negatives that I got rid of, this was back in January, was not placing blame on other people for anything, even if it is somebody else's fault. So one of the things that I used to do all the time, I would misplace something around the house and then I would blame my wife. You know, why are you always moving my stuff? So got rid of that, haven't done it. The wife has noticed this and she appreciates it. So as you think through your positives and negatives, the things you're adding or taking away, think about the impact that they may have on friends, family, coworkers. Now March was a bit of a rough month for me in terms of sticking to my 24 and 21. So my positive for March, the thing that I was adding is planking on the stealth core board. And I had started the month, pretty well, and then I had my prostate biopsy, and after that, I was supposed to not do anything strenuous for, I think, two to four days, something like that, and I found that it was about four days for me. So I missed about four days there, and then last week, I was sick with this cold and flu thing and just really didn't have the energy. So I, it was not a complete success on, on the Stealth Core board but I'm not gonna beat myself up over that. We'll just keep it going in April. The getting rid of something that's not valuable or negative 
was finding one thing every day to clean up and, and find something to throw away, recycle, repurpose, sell in a rummage sale, but kind of declutter my life a bit. And it could be as small as a single drawer, a single desk drawer. But so long as I did that every day, that was my negative. And that's one, though, that I think is going to be harder to sustain throughout the year. I think maybe what I need to do is get into the habit of just, as I look at something, kind of always be aware of whether or not, is this something I really need? Is this something I really use? Why do I still have this? And if I can't answer those questions, then it's time to get rid of it. Recycle, repurpose, sell, give away, whatever. In terms of my ads for April, I'm gonna start doing the Wim Hof method. So I bought the book, I'm about halfway through. When I get done, I'll do a full review on the book and, and my thoughts. I'm already doing the cold shower thing. I've been doing that since February. So it's been eight weeks since I've taken a warm shower. And it's actually to the point now, I really enjoy it. It's very exhilarating. I turn on the water to a cold setting, don't even hesitate. I jump right in the shower, kind of lift one foot and then lean and step in. And from there, it's, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Well, I mean, cold sailing, but smooth. And I find by the time I'm done with my shower, I've got a pretty good red sort of hue to me. Not unlike Wim does, and you see those pictures of him sitting cross-legged out in the snow. The other two pillars of the Wim Hof method are meditation, which I do, but he gets a little bit more specific about intention. And so that sort of becomes your, your if not your mantra, it becomes the thing that you try and focus on so that you remember throughout the day. And then the other element, what is the other element? Oh, is breathing. And he's got some specific breathing exercises that are kind of interesting. I tried it once. He's got a guided breathing exercise out on YouTube. I'll link to it down below. And I did this, and on my first try, I was able to hold my breath for two minutes, which had you told me that I could do, I wouldn't have believed you. So we'll give this a whirl. We'll see how it treats me over the course of the next 30 days, and I'll let you know. So now it's your turn. Let me know down in the comments below how things have been going for you this year in terms of sticking with your positive habits and breaking your negative habits. And what are you going to do in April? It just occurred to me, I forgot to tell you what the get rid of the negative was for me. I stopped drinking Monster Ultra, I think it's Monster Ultra Zero or something like that. It's, you know, I realize that these energy drinks are probably not the best thing for me. But at the time, it was zero calories, zero carbohydrates. Seemed like, you know, it was fine. Good little blast of energy when I'm not in the mood for coffee. But then a couple months ago, Monster either changed their formula or they changed their nutritional labeling. And suddenly it was six grams of carbs per serving. And I'm not sure how much of it was sugar alcohol, but regardless, I stopped. And then I discovered this Rockstar Pure Zero stuff. Two grams total carbohydrates, they're both erythritol. And I found I really liked the taste of this stuff. 240 milligrams of caffeine. This will supercharge you, but I'm done. I'm done with this. I've got this can and I've got one more can and then we're in April and I'm done. And then I may actually look at trying to just stop coffee as well. I have no idea how much all of this is impacting my sleep and, and things like that, but maybe it's time for me to give up caffeine, but we'll see. We'll start with the rock star in April and then decide if maybe it's time to wean myself off a of coffee for the month after that, which would be May. I probably didn't need to explain that part, did I? So that's 24 and 21 for April. One of the things that I find interesting every week when I do this podcast are which are the topics that seem to resonate with all of you the most. And very often the things that I expect that you will comment on, you don't, or not as many of you do as I expect. And then there are other things, just sort of you know, almost offhanded comments that I make that wind up getting a tremendous amount of response from all of you. And certainly last week was the case because I thought what was going to be the big interaction thing between all of us was talking about the foods that you used to love that now that you're on keto, just 
hold no more appeal for you. And I got a fair amount of responses on that. But what I got the most responses about was when I talked about some of the comments that I get where people tell me that they're disappointed in me or disappointed in the channel. And I got hundreds, hundreds of responses on that. Very, very kind, like make me blush sort of responses that um, it really meant a lot to me. And I wasn't, I wasn't fishing for anything like that, but I appreciate the kind words that so many of you shared with me last week. It really, it helped out, especially given the fact that the channel seems to be not as active in terms of views and subscribers as it was earlier in the year, and that kind of had me a little bit bummed out, and you guys helped lift my spirits, so I appreciate that. Another comment that I get a lot that I really appreciate is when you tell me that these little Monday morning podcasts are like sitting across the table and having a conversation with me over coffee or Rockstar. To me, that's how I want it to feel. I want this to feel like we're interacting because I can't just do a Twitch stream. That would be, that would be too chaotic. I tried doing a live stream once for the general public. I still do them for my channel members, the, the top two tiers of my channel members, but I tried doing one for the general public and it was just chaos. It was impossible for me to even you know, follow all the comments that, that went scrolling by. And I found that I had to spend a lot of energy just sort of policing the comments for bad behavior because there was some really inappropriate stuff that was said. So that was sort of my one and done on the whole live stream. So to me, this is the next best thing. I talk like you're sitting across the table to me. I'm looking at you right now. And uh, we're sharing this morning, assuming you're watching this in the morning together. And while I can't immediately respond to the things that you say, I can certainly follow up fairly rapidly in the comments. And if you wind up touching on something that I think would be an interesting subject, who knows, it may be a future podcast subject. So with that, we will take our brief, hopefully, little ad break. See you in a second. So as I mentioned before the break, sometimes I will get viewer questions that then give me an idea or give me content for future podcasts. And I'm gonna do one of those in just a minute. But I think another segment that I will start doing in these podcasts is frequently asked questions. So there are some that I just get over and over and over again, and I'll pick one a week and talk about it. So the very first one is, Steve, what do you do for exercise? And the answer is not much, probably not enough. Mostly what I've been doing the last few months, aside from a little bit of strength training and working my core now with this stealthier core thing, is I follow my family around the house turning off lights. I get about 5,000 steps in a day in my own house, just following around, turning off lights. I think it's a dad thing. Hopefully though, as it gets warmer, we'll see two things. One, which will be my family, my wife, my son, my grandson, especially outside playing so that I don't have to be wandering around turning off lights, but also then I'll get outside as well, which I'm dying to do. I want to start getting my bare feet on the earth, feel some real earthing, grounding going on. I want to get out and start doing some sprints again in the morning and then walking and listening to podcasts or audiobooks or just doing a walking meditation. I miss that. And, you know, I used to be pretty religious about doing that, getting out and running and um, or walking. And then with the COVID thing, it got just sort of weird being outside and the, the amount of space people were giving each other. You're walking down the sidewalk and you see somebody and then you walk out onto the street to, to stay that far away from them. Now, here's sort of the weird, I don't know if I'd call it a dichotomy or just lack of congruence, but even though I'm an introvert, I really love the interaction with other people. Just to, to smile, smiling at another person. I don't need to talk to you or anything necessarily, but to smile, to acknowledge somebody. Growing up in the Midwest, I, I was just used to that. If you're walking downtown in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, where I grew up, every person you saw, you made eye contact with and you'd nod or you'd smile or you'd say hi or good morning. And then you get into a bigger city 
when I moved to Milwaukee, and people don't acknowledge each other. It's and, and I've seen this even more so, like when I go to New York City and everybody's got headphones on and just you, you're in your sort of zone. You don't even acknowledge people. But I like acknowledging people. I like smiling and I like getting that return smile. And that has been, to me, the, the difficulty with this whole pandemic. I mean, there's a lot of difficulties with the pandemic, but I miss smiles. And what I don't enjoy is this fear that we now have of one another, even when we're outside walking. So uh, I kind of went off on a tangent there because <laughs> we were talking about exercise. But I guess this means I'll just have to get up early enough in the morning that I've got the sidewalk to myself. And hopefully within the next couple of weeks, you know, it'll start being above freezing at six in the morning when I can get out and go for a run and a walk. So that's what I do for exercise. And my hope is that once I get back into a pattern of doing that, I can get rid of the quarantine 15. The topic though that one of my viewers brought up in this past week, it also has to do with the weather, is Steve, now that the weather's getting nice, are you gonna talk about gardening? I'd love to hear what you do for gardening, how you incorporate it into your cooking and your keto lifestyle. This is sort of a weird one for me. I started gardening back in 2008 and just took to it, just absolutely loved it. And as a Lean Six Sigma process-oriented sort of guy, I was always trying to look at ways to make it more efficient. How can I increase my productivity? How can I increase my yield? How can I maximize my space? How can I make it easier to take care of? All of these things. And I was just super duper passionate about it. I've actually purchased a URL related to that. Um, I think it's called like the Lean Gardener or something like that. I don't remember exactly. That's further on down my list of future projects. But every year I've told myself I should, at the very beginning of the year, document all that I do, whether in pictures and words for a book or film it to make a, a series because I would start with seed. Actually, let's go back. It starts probably in December when I get my first seed catalog from Burpee or Gurney or Totally Tomatoes. Incidentally, if you like tomatoes and peppers, get out on the www.totallytomato.com. They're actually, I think, located in Madison, Wisconsin, so not that far away from me. And just an amazing selection of tomatoes and peppers. So usually I order from them. And it reminds me a lot of when I was a kid back in the 70s and you'd get the J.C. Penney's or Sears Christmas catalog and you'd just be going through it and dog ear and all the pages. Oh, I want this and I want this. And oh, here's the $6 million man figure with the bionic eye and the evil Knievel doll. So maybe that just gave a flashback to some of you as well. But that's, that's the sort of level of excitement that I would have when I had the seed catalogs. And I would always wind up ordering too much. But... I would start everything from seed down in my basement. I've got a, a back room off over there where I've got some workout equipment and some storage stuff. And I used to have my beer brewing equipment back there and a little area with some grow lamps and a heating mat. And that's where I would start my seeds. And I would just, I would nurture them. They were my babies. I would probably transplant them two to three times till eventually I was up in like the four or five inch pots and I had tomato plants that were this big you know before they went into the ground they were really starting to cook in fact you know some of them were close to flowering already and it was tremendously time consuming but I just I was so passionate about it I just I loved it and I got to a point where maybe I was a little bit out of control so I think I had one year, 26 different tomato varieties going, about that many in the way of peppers as well. Those are my big things, tomatoes and peppers. And I tend to go with things that either are hard to find in the store, you know, so heirloom tomatoes, specialty peppers, or things that I know I'm just going to go through a bunch of. And then I do cucumbers and arugula and various leafy greens and zucchini and... I'm not sure what else. Tomatillos, usually. I know I'm missing a ton of stuff, but 
I'd get those going in my garden. I, I would set up a special sort of drip irrigation system, and then I covered it with this red reflective mulch tarp, and I had pathways through the garden with weed tarp. And I found that, you know, I'd get home from work and still spend two hours in the garden, pruning, watering, fertilizing. You know, I tried to do everything organic, huge amount of work. And two things kind of happen that, that started to sour me. First off is you're sort of in a perpetual battle with mother nature when you're a gardener. As much as I would love to have a farm and animals and be actually farming farming, it, mother nature is a cruel, cruel gal sometimes. Whether it's frost on Memorial Day weekend, I've had that happen. You know, so I've had my plants in the ground for a couple of weeks, they're coming along, they're looking great, and we get a hard frost and done, everything's dead. Or you get a hailstorm that just clobbers everything. So there's that, there's the heartache of dealing with mother nature. But then I also found I didn't get a lot of help from the family on any of this stuff. And I'm a vertical gardener, so I like to grow upward rather than outward. I do a lot of pruning of my tomato plants and they tend to get tall, like eight feet tall, pretty big, just growing you know, straight up. And I just got frustrated because I felt that the family who was benefiting from all of this gardening wasn't really helping out a whole bunch. And, you know, it's my hobby. They didn't sign up to be gardeners. I signed up to be a gardener. Still, it would have, it would have meant a lot to me to have them helping more. So between all the work and some of the other frustrations that just went with it, I gradually started dialing back. And to the point that last year, I had a handful of pepper plants, a handful of tomato plants, I think zucchini, had some lettuce. I like really rotating the various leafy greens through my garden. And, uh, and that was it. And I did, I had remarkably low passion for that. The one thing I did still have passion for was my herb garden. So I always have a number of different herbs. I love when I'm cooking to be able to just go out onto my back deck or back patio and snip some fresh herbs. So long story short, actually, maybe it's too late for that. It's already a long story, but I didn't start any seeds this year. I just, I didn't feel it. My hope is that as the weather starts getting nice and I get outside and I start cleaning up last year's mess in the garden, that some of that passion may start coming back and I'll go and I'll pick up some plants, you know, probably half a dozen tomatoes maybe instead of 20 plus and probably on the peppers stick to the things that I know I'm gonna use regularly. So serranos, jalapenos, probably not poblanos. I just, I don't get enough yield on a plant to really justify the space. Probably some New Mexican varieties of peppers, Anaheim's. I always try and do one habanero, like a little bit of heat. I used to do ghost pepper and I had done the maruga scorpion, but you hit a point where these things are just nothing but heat, like almost hallucination inducing. And I, I decided I don't need that anymore. But I'll either pick these plants up at a garden center or if things are back and sort of open enough again, you know, and wherever we're at with the whole COVID thing, the farmer's market, because I'd far rather support other people, people like me that have a passion around gardening and started these seedlings themselves. I am still quite excited about my herb garden. I do need to do a better job this year of maintaining my herbs. You know, some of them can really get out of control. Basil is one of them. If you're not pruning back basil, it can flower very rapidly. So need to control that a little bit more. And maybe if I can get my wife's help and put her in charge of the tomato aspect of the garden and I can focus on herbs, I can do that. I also think staying on top of the herbs and dehydrating them for off season use. But I can tell you right now, my chives are already coming in. I gotta get out and clean that up, clean up all the dead stuff from last year. The moment it gets remotely nice and sunny out. I'm going to be outside digging in the dirt. I will have to remember this year to wear gloves because now that I'm taking care of my nails and uh, they're not all chewed down to the quick, um, I don't want to be busting them up and getting them all dirty and gross and stuff out in the garden. So 
Even though it goes against everything I believe in gardening, I will probably start wearing gloves as I garden. And who knows, maybe there'll be some little clip or some little video of it. I don't know, no promises. The other thing I also can't promise is just because you request that I cover a topic in a podcast doesn't necessarily mean I'll do it. But if you throw out a good idea and it's something that I've got some excitement and passion about, it could very well wind up being a podcast subject. I can't do an Easter egg recap on last week because the Easter egg wound up being Colton, just running through the room. And uh, this week, you probably noticed, I took down the guitar chord poster. So no reflections there. I got this serious keto canvas print. I'm not sure if it's the largest size. I'd like to probably get something a little bit larger. I think that would look cool back there during the podcasts. If for whatever reason you want one like that, just go down into the links below. I always include that link for merch out on Teespring, which I believe now is just called Spring. You can get those and some other designs. I'm in the process of finalizing a Redbubble store, which is going to have more in the way of potential gear, especially aprons. I know that a lot of people have asked about some sort of a cooking apron, and I have designed one, and it's just a matter of launching the Redbubble store, which... There's really nothing keeping me from doing that outside of just laziness. So maybe by next week, I'll have that up and running. But that is it for this podcast, as always. Thanks for listening or watching.